Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to a sneak peek preview of the Kursk DLC with Unity of Command 2's Operational Combat System. Now this is the eighth DLC in their system and of course it covers combat on the Eastern Front in the summer of 1943. We'll talk more on that in a bit, but if you're not familiar with Unity of Command 2, it's an operational World War II combat system that is massive now. There are, just, I mean this again is the eighth DLC, there's DLCs covering North Africa, Western Front, a lot in the Eastern Front all of them fun and deep with multiple scenarios and multiple campaigns in them. Now, to talk specifically about the Kursk DLC before we jump in and start, most of the DLCs allow you to play from one side, either the Axis or the Allies. This one is uh, allows you to play from both sides. So there's a full campaign of 16 scenarios with from the Russian side that you can play. So that's the main emphasis of the DLC. And then a secondary element is a kind of a smaller campaign. It's 15 scenarios, but it has two alternative tracks. So it ends up being a much shorter campaign that you can play from the Axis side. So tons of gameplay, 31 scenarios and all in this DLC. And so now let's jump in and play the first scenario from the Russian side. Now, what we're looking at here behind me is the conference room. These come up before you start certain segments of the campaign. And we can see on the top left above my head, we have our fronts. These are basically our headquarters. We've got the West, Bryant, Central, Vorozna, Steppe, and then the South Front. The first scenario we're going to play is on the South Front. I think it has the Vorozna and the Steppe Front headquarters. We have a prestige number up at the top. So this is basically our, our kind of our planning, what we want to emphasize as we're going into this first scenario, first couple of scenarios. So we want to spend these prestige points because there isn't an opportunity really to spend them once we start into the scenarios in this segment of the campaign. And we can spend them really on two things right now. One is we can upgrade our headquarters, which we'll do a little bit of. We can also buy cards and we get this uh, Stavka Elite Replacements one free. So we'll of course add that one. And luckily we also have a bomber asset here, which is good too, because that will give us a little bit of air power to blast people. Now, I'm not particularly adept at this artillery preparation card, but I wanna try it just to kind of put it in there. And that gives us 80 prestige left. I wanna go in and we can upgrade certain aspects of our headquarters. In this first scenario, we're limited to range upgrades only, which basically means how much space, how many hexes, does our headquarters allow us to command. So we can increase the strength of it by spending 25 prestige to increase the range of the headquarters from eight to 10. And I wanna do that for the Vorozna and then the step one. And then let's go up to the west front here and add one there, even though that's not in this scenario. And now we've spent all of our prestige except for five lonely points. That should be enough. Let's jump in past the conference now and we're going to be, uh, this will show us our scenario here, which is Prokhorovka. We're gonna start there and let's give this go. It's a nine turn scenario. And in this scenario, uh, we're going to be kind of absorbing the initial German assault on Kursk. Because one of the things about this DLC is that both sides are attacking, both sides are defending. It's a massive campaign. There was a huge buildup on both sides during the historical campaign. And this DLC kind of captures that. In this scenario here, I'll skip this little dispatch. We'll close these little navigational pieces here. But we can see we've got, uh, we're the green as the Soviets, and then the Germans are the gray, and they're in the south part of the screen or just on the bottom part of the screen as we're looking at it. We can see a bunch of red city names here. These are the objectives that we currently hold. And if we look on the right side, we can see the objective list there. There are six objectives. Oboyan, which is kind of right here, this larger one up oops, it's over here, this one right here, then we have Kursk up at the top, which we have to hold. These are our major objectives. By nine turns, we cannot lose these two cities. But there are uh, secondary objectives in here. These four cities, if you would, or four locations in red. Donetsk Crossing, Yakolevo, Kochetovka, and Prokhorovka. These four places we have to hold at turn seven. Now, we're probably going to lose these because the Germans are pretty strong. And just before we start, two caveats. Usually when I play these, I'll play on normal and I can win on normal. And then I go up to classic and that's where I kind of struggle. And I usually record these things on classic. However, I've played both the beginning 
German scenario in the Zitadel campaign, which is that minor campaign that this DLC encompasses. encompasses. And I played this one both times I got absolutely mauled. So usually the DLCs have kind of like a feel-good introductory scenario that kind of eases you into the campaign. I don't think that's the case here. And I think perhaps I'm just not very good yet at defending in this game. And so we may see a massacre. So I wouldn't take this as a how to play so much as an exposition of gameplay. This is the type of things that are in the game. These are types of things that you're going to be asked to do. So with that, hopefully we can have def some fun, even if we get mauled in defeat. But I'm not optimistic as the leader of the Russian forces here that we're going to come out of this scenario with a victory. Let's get started. So what we're looking at right now is uh, the German forces down here. We can see this brown dotted line, which is the front lines there. And we hold all of the objectives that are necessarily both the minor and the bonus objectives, if you would, and then the main objectives. Now, the last time, the first time I played, I left our Russian forces here. And then these panzer tanks, these German tanks that we're looking at right in the center here, just basically mauled us. They kind of one shot things. They're super powerful. Their infantry is very experienced, veteran and elite, and they just crushed us. So by turn two, I was way back, losing all of our objectives and kind of fighting in this plane between Kursk and Oboyan. It was so quick. So I'm gonna try to be a little bit more defensive here. I'm gonna try to pull our Russian forces behind the river and try to set up a little bit of a better defensive position. I think it was a little bit naive to expect us to be able to fight where we are on the plane. And militarily, we want to be behind rivers if we're going to defend. And our general strategy is going to be defend, absorb the initial German offensive where we can, try to chip off some units if we can, and then counterattack from the sides, sweep in behind, cut them all off, and wipe them all out. That's our plan. So what I'm going to do first, enough of the talking, I am going to pull back some of these units. And basically in the game, moving movement is really easy. You just kind of click and you pull back. We're going to send them up over the bridge here and just kind of reposition them. And so I'm going to try to get all of our units safely behind, not safely, but behind the river, hopefully, so we can better absorb this onslaught of German armor that's coming at us here. Once I get that done, I'll come back. So I've moved our units behind the river here. We're going to do a couple more things before we end our turn. I'm going to take this infantry here that's on Oboyan, and we are going to use this little dynamite, destroy the bridge thing. We're gonna blow the bridge here, take it out of action. I'm gonna leave this other one in place because I think, I suspect here that the, the Germans are gonna come down for these objectives and not necessarily try to come around this outside, but we'll see what they do. I'd like to leave that in place because that might be our avenue for trying to cut in behind and pick off some units here too. But we're conceding these two objectives here for the moment, Kochetovka and Yakolevo for the moment. The other thing I want to do here is, and it's just something I want to experiment with is this rear guard action, which means that basically just retreat. So I'm going to put this, we've left kind of a sacrificial lamb up in front of um, our kind of third objective here. And we're going to hit the rear guard key, which basically is going to say run away, I think. And that way, hopefully we'll kind of cut our losses a little bit. Now, a couple of things. I think that's pretty much all we're going to be able to do here. We don't, oh, we can dig in here with this unit. That's good. I'll kind of spend a couple more of these command points to solidify our defense some, but we're pretty much done, I think, in terms of what we want to do in the first turn. And uh, I want to move this headquarters back probably as well. Let's click on it again. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a very safe place. Let's go back a couple of places here. We're gonna also, we don't need that supply there for the moment, I don't think. So let's take that one out and let's put a third one up here just to kind of shift around things. And I think that should leave us in a pretty good supply situation here if we look at it. Yeah, I'm just looking at these dashes and it looks like it's covering a lot of ground here. We're in pretty good shape, I think, supply-wise. This doesn't seem to be a scenario that challenges us supply-wise. Now, the last thing I think we can do is we have this air attack that I think we want to use. Don't want to let it go to waste. We have one of those per turn. I don't know if we try to blow up some. I don't think it's going to work, but let's see what happens if we hit this armor. Nice! One KIA. That's good. So we picked up a damage point there. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm just going to take a quick look, and then we'll come back and end this first turn. One more thing I want to do, given that I've done rather poorly the first time I played this game, I'm actually going to burn up this uh, Stavka Elite Replacements card, and let's put our bomber into action here too, to give us a second one. For the moment, I'm going to save this artillery preparation card for a second scenario, so I don't want to spend all of our cards in the first one. And that gives us a second air asset. Let's hit this armor again, since it worked the first time. 
two KI. That's good. So we've kind of whittled down this armor a little bit here. That makes me feel a little bit more optimistic since we've got some air cover in here. Um, and we have some elite replacements now that we could put into play. I'm kind of think about where we want to put them though. We've got three. It costs us 10 each and we have 300 prestige to spend on them. I'm going to scatter these out a bit a little bit here. Alrighty, so I've spent about uh, 60 of our prestige upgrading a few units with some elite yeah, kind of contingents there. And with that in mind, I think we're in good shape here. Let's end our turn. Let's watch the Germans come maul us here. They, I, I don't know if they've improved the AI in the game or what, but it seems like they really have strengthened things here. So that unit should run away. Yes, good, it did. Okay. That unit, oh, got crushed, but it survived. That unit got crushed and ran away. Coming across the, br the bridge here, that's fine. That held. I just want these units to survive. We've been, the times I played before, we just got so many units killed here. So they're attacking the main objective there. Digging in. Is that it? Adding some strength to these units here. Okay. That's much better than I did in the first turn last time. So that's object. That's a little bit of um, of a goal. One CP to stragglers on the Verosna front. That's not bad. We survive much better than we did last time. So I'm going to take a second here and think about what we want to do in turn two. So the very first thing that we want to do is I want to check the reinforcements up here. We have a deploy now that we can see for our we get a we're going to get a good bit of reinforcements here for the next three turns. We're going to get roughly about six seven units per turn. These units come over here, so we're going to bring in the replace, the reinforcements first. So I'm going to shuffle some units around because some other units are blocking, but I want to get all our reinforcements in and then it's time to think. So let me do that first. All right, I've got most of our reinforcements in. The only one I didn't pull in was this one right here to the north of this German Panzer tank uh, icon here because I want to kind of have this unit actually dig in and it's pretty good against armor. So I'm gonna have that rather than bringing a reinforcement there. So we've got all of our reinforcements in here now and we can see that the situation looks a little bit less dire here. I wanna try now to rearrange these to get the armor on the other side of this bridge so that we can launch them across the bridge into the left flank of the Germans. So I'm gonna do a little bit of reorganization here and then we'll see what it looks like. So working on that same defensive strategy, I've reorganized our troops a little bit, brought the armor here on the left side, just on the poised on the other side of the river. I kind of shuffled around some of our troops in the front lines here to try to see if we can hold here where we know the Germans are going to attack and then here. To that effect, I think what we want to try to do is let's see if we can whittle down some of this armor again here, particularly this point one. So let's bring some aircraft on this and see if we can hit it. We can do it a little bit, but still, that's not much of an attack there, is it? Let's try that again, see if we can have better success. I'd love to get a KIA. Nice, couple of KIs. So just kind of chipping away at this armor when it's in the open here. I wonder if our attack would be any better. No, two to one, that's not too bad. But I, I think we're going to let these units defend here for a little bit. So with that in mind, we have uh, five command points left. I'm going to have this unit on the other side of the river, spend one of them to dig in. And then up here, for this unit here, let's have them do a rear guard action. We will concede that point to an attack. Hopefully, the units here in Prokhorovka can hold. But I suspect that's where the thrust of the German attack is going to be. But now that we'll whittle down the armor, maybe we'll be okay. Then on this side, over here by Donetsk Crossing, we, we have a lot of force. I might actually start shifting some of these troops to what I think is going to be our weak spot up in here. That might be actually a good idea. Let's bring this unit that's out of supply. Nope, not there. Let's bring them up here just a little bit. Let's bring this infantry unit over here with the idea that I think we're holding fairly well down here. Um, and with that in mind, though, we can, however, have this unit. We have six command points with the step front. We'll have them dig in a little bit more. I'll look for a couple other places where we can spend some points here. But I think this front here, if we look at their control zone, is kind of all dug in. So we're looking pretty good. Now, these units moved, so they can't dig in. I think I'm just going to check a couple things, and I think we might be ready to go on to the, our, our, our let the Germans go their second turn. 
Last thing I did was, I think we have too many infantry units on the right side, so I reorganized one. Basically, you kind of click on it and then use this reorganization thing here, which, which basically removes it, but it allows you to redistribute those infantrymen to other units later in the scenario. So I kind of broke apart one of the infantry units down here to allow us to resupply some of the other ones and strengthen them because we have too many units, I think. I don't know if it's a good strategy or not, but we're going to try it. With that in mind, I think we've accomplished our goals for turn two. Let's see the uh, German nastiness here. And turn reminders, energy headquarters. There are unre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I talking about? We have more reinforcements here. Yeah, that's the one. We're just not bringing that one in. So we're good. Yep. So that's okay. Thanks for the reminder. But we're going to end our turn here because I don't want to bring that one in yet. Let's see how the Germans respond. Attacking across the river here with the heavy armor. Oof. Retreat. Retreat. Good. Okay. Oh, that got killed. Blew it away. And they're across the river here. Attacking in force. Hold. That one withdrew. Okay. We lost our objective. Okay. That got hit. Lost one unit so far. Attacking across the river. And they ran away. Attacking across the river. And they ran away. Oh. Pushed far in. Oh, they wiped that unit out. Ah, we're getting mauled again. It all looks so good until... Started to, oh, man. They're just crushing our armor. They're not even going after Donetsk Crossing. I'm not sure what's going on here. That's interesting. I mean, it's. It, I think soon they have to go after that objective because that's the one they haven't gotten yet here. Okay. Five PCCP to strag stragglers. Did we lose that? So we only have one left here. Is that right? For our command, for our command on this one, those command points, the rows in the front. Yeah, we only got one because we got mauled so badly. Okay, so we we need to do something now, right? Because we can't just they 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 push through to this objective, th turn three, and we are in dire straits again. The only one of our objectives, the uh, the bonus objectives we're holding, is Donuts Crossing, which for some reason they, I think they're waiting to bring this armor up here, but we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna think for a second, then we'll come up with a strategy. Okay, so looking at the situation, the first thing we want to do is get our reinforcements in. So let's do that and see what it looks like. So our reinforcements are in, except for the one where, again, where this Panther tank is the, uh, sitting right here in our reinforcement spot. So we've got everything, in, which just gives us a bit more armor here, another armor up here, and then some kind of stronger armor over here. This is a fairly strong unit, 6454. Yeah, so we got some pretty good units coming in here now. But the, the this thing I'm struggling with is that if we look at our potential attacks, like even this armor here, that's a good one. The, the left number is our expected losses, and the right number is our expected uh, in casualties that we're going to inflict. This is a good attack for us. But if we look, for example, if we click here and try to attack this armor unit here, we're going to lose four and and uh, gain nothing. We're not going to wipe out anything. Likewise, this infantry attacking five to nothing. These are horrible attacks. That's a two to nothing attack across the river, which isn't bad, I suppose. Four to nothing. Five. But yeah, I mean, these are just tough attacks. Likewise, if we think about flanking in here, they're still not good attacks. And we have two assaults with air air units here. Somehow we're in serious trouble unless we can weaken this kind of strong, strong kind of lance of air, of armor that the Germans are bringing across with these four units. So I want to try to use our air units here somehow to weaken one of these. And then hopefully we can maybe chop away at this infantry, knock out one of these armored units. Because right now they have, what is it? If we look here, they have five and they have two more coming in so seven all together what no six they have six they're gonna have eight all together so our we have to knock these down to size we have to start wiping some of these out if we're gonna have any chance getting them out of supply i'd love to come in and cut in from behind here and force this armor to react more to the west but i don't know how to do that considering we don't really have good attacks in here i mean we could put our aircraft down here and try to swing in this way but I think for the moment, we're going to wait one turn on that. I'm going to try to pound some of these units up here with air. I'm going to think for a second. All right, so this, this armored unit here, this Panther one, is just a beast. And I think we have to try to wear it down. So let's see what happens if we put one armor attack. Okay, air attack. Knocked it down by one. That's good. Still a rough attack. And we don't have any of these kind of set piece attacks or suppressive fire attacks. We don't have enough command points to do them. 
So it's just a brutal attack if we attack on these armor here. Let, do we want to spend our second air unit on that? Let's do it. I feel like this is the beast we have to take down. That was actually pretty good. Still, four to nothing. Five to nothing. Do we dare attack with this? I feel like this is a catastrophe waiting to happen, but... We need to whittle it down somehow. We don't have another way. Let's do it. One suppressed. Oh, we drove it away. That's good. We want to get this unit out of here so we can reinforce it and rebuild it. Let's see what happens now if we push up. Five to nothing still. All we did was push it out. God, what a beast. Okay, that was a dumb attack. Anyway, let's see if we can knock these units down a bit here. I wish we saved one of our air attacks for these because that's five to nothing. It doesn't accomplish anything. It just beats us up here. This is good, though. And we can cut in here behind this unit, too. Let's do that a little bit. Oh, this is risky. Let's come in behind here and see if we can do that. I think pounding this one here makes sense. Good. That hurt. That helped. We get a better attack. Two to one. I think we have to do it. We got to wipe out something here. Okay. It's a little progress. One to one. We got some of this armor that can come over here. Yeah, that's better. Let's do it. Good. Starting to whittle that one away. Good. And let's get out of the way now with this one so we can bring some infantry up. Bring our armor up to attack and our infantry to reinforce. We should be able to wipe this unit out. Finally. Okay, good. We got a kill there. Now, can we get anything going here on this armor in here? We really can't. Okay. I mean, we did wipe something out. That's good. Okay, I'm going to reset our defense and then we'll go from there. All righty, we're ready. Let's go on. We, I've pulled up kind of a, a front, dug in where we could, but without the command points up here on... Oh, I should, yeah, I moved that back. Okay, we're good. Kind of pulled our armor up behind our infantry here, hopefully again that our infantry can absorb some of the hits here and that maybe next turn, turn four, we can try to cut in behind here because we do have to get some of these objectives again by turn seven. So we need to turn the tide here. I am thankful that we were able to whittle this armor down a little bit. We're starting to put dents in the German armor, but still, it's really strong here, and we'll see what happens. I'm not confident. Units in armor. Yeah, we know that. That's good. Okay. Let's see what the dastardly Germans are going to do now. Oof. Overrun. Oh, they're coming in from the side. Wow, they just one-shot these units. Look at that. They just blow them apart. They just wiped out three out of four units with one shot. Those, the double attacking on the armors there. That one was dug in. That was a little better. Here comes more. They captured prisoners. Okay, they're pushing towards Kursk now. Ah, this armor is deadly. Look at that. There goes another unit. Oh, 4K. They, did they wipe that? They did not wipe it out. They can attack twice. Oh my god, they're just crushing us. They just wiped out another unit. Oh, they blow our armor apart. Okay, here comes more tanks, and they brought their supplies in, and they are completely rolling over. They have their entire armored front up here. Okay, I think our only hope... Yeah, look at this. They are going to cut these units off, too. I think our only hope... Now, we have to launch from the side here and try to come in on the side, but terrible attacks here, but I think we use our air here punch in from the side and hopefully this is weak i don't quite know what's over here oh my gosh we just got wet wailed on though somehow we have to figure out how to destroy this armor but can we attack is that positive yeah there we go so we can knock that one out this is good we got some of our fresh armor coming in here this unit yeah this unit has some okay look they kind of overextended themselves here now we might be able to pound this armor here now look at that zero to two zero to three i don't understand the mechanics quite enough to know why all of a sudden it's shifted in our favor but it looks like we can counterattack almost head on that one can't oh it's only got three strength points left that one can't but these units up here they're full strength i think they're just a lot stronger these can give us some really strong attacks here, right? This one too? Nope. Go there. No, not really. This one? Yeah, it's not. I mean, these could be secondary attacks, right? Coming in here. Maybe that's our plan. To hit these two here, right above the supply. Hit these right above the supply dumps. Can we take that one there? 
zero to four, four, and then just cut these other two off, these ones that are overextended. That might be our plan. I'm going to think for a second. And actually, before we get started, we have more reinforcements too. So it's not all, that's not totally dire here. Let's get our reinforcements in. Nice, more armor. And what have we got? Guards up here. I'll get these in. We'll take a look. So our reinforcements are over here on the east side, the right side of the, the screen here. A lot of guards and a couple of armored units too, which could be really helpful. And that even actually make it, it can, can come up here and almost wipe this unit out. I think we're actually going to do that right to start. Let's get busy, see if we can pound some of this German armor here. Sorry for the dramatic interruption, everybody. We're going to carve this uh, scenario up into two parts. It got a little bit long. We're at the halfway point. Is this the high water mark of the German assault? And will we push them back? Or is Kursk once again, as in my earlier attempt at this scenario, destined to fall to this massive German armored onslaught? Check out part two for the conclusion.